What's going on guys? It's Percy TCG here and I have something very special for you guys today. I have an interview with uh, Tim Rivera, the winner of the Palm Springs event in uh, California. So without further ado, let's just get right into that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If uh, you do like and enjoy, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. It helps me to uh, be motivated to create more content. So uh, much appreciated guys. So stay tuned first off i just want to say congratulations on the win um so how I appreciate does it feel, that yeah uh, how, how does it feel to come out on top it always feels good when you come out on top there's nothing you kind of regret from the tournament so um yeah it feels good a lot of people reached out and said congratulations that's always nice and then uh you know it's just like a overall good weekend for my team so oh just, yeah it's kind of happy yeah so i had it was myself and two of my friends that went down and all all three of us made the top 32 so we're all qualified for the pro tour oh yeah man that's that's good to hear it's really good what what deck did you use i played the red pterosaur deck it's just i feel it's just the best deck in the game right now and the, the promise just like has like everything that you'd want in a deck it's it got it has card draw with star bless draw it has the best removals and burning force and volcanic break. And then it just has the best creatures like bearded Eagle has the stats. That's on a different level compared to most cards, you know, uh, Giganto Rex is, I mean, what, what can you say about that card that has been said already? It, just, it solves a lot of problems. Like if you don't have the specific answer for a certain deck, that guy usually can solve it for you. So kind of, it's like a catch all. It's just, it just seems like everything lined up for red just to be the most powerful color right now. I I completely agree with that. Um, red is just uh, ridiculously overpowered with uh, the amount of pressure it can put put on the uh, opponent. Yeah, for sure. Um. So, did you encounter any uh, difficult opponents or challenges during the event? And if so, how did you overcome them? Yeah, I got a little sketchy there here, and uh, let's see, I was 5-0, and and I played against Colin, and so if you don't know Colin, he made top four at the launch event in Las Vegas, and I guess that dude's never lost in uh, the Swiss rounds of the of either tournament, he just like went undefeated both in Las Vegas and here in the Swiss rounds, so uh, I played him, and we I lost a pretty close game to go to like 5-1, and one. and then next round, I played against... Uh, and Masu, so the guy I played in the finals. I played against him the next round, then lost, and then had a. That's like the winning end. So if I win, I make top sixteen. If I lose, I'm just heading home the next day, driving back to Vegas. So that was, you know, <clears throat> that was probably the toughest part. And then uh, in the last round, I played against that yellow fabled beast deck, and that's like one of the best matchups the red Ter pterosaur deck can have. Just because, like, their game plan is to get a bunch of um, nexuses on the on the field, and since I can kill them pretty easily, it just kind of kills their plan. And I just sit there and kind of eat their guys with the big confront uh, pterosaurs in my deck or the dragon from the sideboard. So it was kind of a nice final round to make the top sixteen. <laughs> then my top sixteen was pretty. I mean, it was pretty easy, straightforward until the finals because I played three of those stable beasts in a row, and I've. I played that that matchup seven or eight times throughout the tournament, so I really knew how to play that matchup by the end of the day. It just made it a lot easier. All right, so so you had a lot of practice going in, so you knew your matchups fairly well going into this event, right? I did, yeah. We practiced for uh, about a month, so we're I'm from Vegas, and that launch event was here, so I I hadn't even heard of that of Battle Spirit Saga yet, and then. Uh, one of my friends from when I used to play Magic, you know, when I was in my teens back in the 90s, uh, he posted on Twitter, he's coming to Vegas for some event. I looked it up, and I just got my friends here together and said, hey, we should try this out. So we printed up a bunch of proxies on, like, cardstock and put them in sleeves and just practiced for about a month before the launch event. So we already knew a lot of the decks just going into this weekend. So it was kind of all that preparation for the launch event, plus seeing all the deck lists from all the different launch events around the world. We just 
kind of tweaked our deck list that we had, practiced a little bit from there. All right. Uh, so what was your strategy going into the tournament, and <clears throat> did you have to make any adjustments along the way? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, yeah, it's it's always kind of like one of those things. You just got to take it one round at a time. This, I expected to see, you know, pterosaurs, uh, white control. You, you kind of define that meta, like we were just talking about. Lots of practice. You kind of define what you think the meta is going to be. And then there was just so much yellow. There was no star dragons. It, it was just kind of a shock from that. And so when you talk about adjust your strategy, I realized and my sideboard was not great for this event based on what showed up there. So um, from that regard, kind of wish I would have done it a little differently. There's a lot more white aggro, <clears throat> a lot more fable beasts. And there was like almost, I want to say that maybe there's like five people playing purple, which I didn't really expect. I kind of felt that would still be popular too. So, Right, right. Um, were you surprised by the amount of fabled beast players? You know, I was just I played I played that Fable Beast deck in Las Vegas, and uh, after that event, once I I bashed my head into Pterosaurs about uh, four times in that event, I, I was just off of it. So I was kind of surprised that they brought the Fable Beast deck there, when I just think it's such an unfavorable matchup. All right. So, um, how did you prepare for the tournament, both in terms of deck building and practicing your gameplay? Yeah, so uh, I don't know, I'll give you a little background about myself. I've been playing card games since I was 15, so that's about 27 years. I got into Magic when it first came out. And over the years, I've just kind of collected a, a group of friends that all are kind of like me. We just like to play card games. So played Magic and moved into uh, Versus System, World of Warcraft, TCG. And then after the World of Warcraft, TCG kind of died away. We played a little bit more Magic, but... Since then, uh, we've just kind of fallen out. We just don't have any TCGs to play. So once this Battle Spirit Saga came out, just kind of got them back into it. Like, hey, let's try to play this game. So there's a group of us here in Vegas uh, who've had uh, various success over other card games. So it makes it a little bit easier. We're all a little competitive when it comes to it. So uh, we just got together, um, let's say, like three times a week build decks, try different ideas, and uh, really it's just research and just trying new things. I don't know. There's, there's not that many cards out yet. I think as the game continues to grow, more cards are released. Deck building is going to become a lot harder, and there's a lot more strategies. So right now, with only like 200 cards or 201 cards, there, there's not a lot. You need to explore once you've done your you know, month of playtesting, but... It just really just got together with my friends. So it just gave us kind of a reason to hang out. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so what cards were the most valuable in your deck during the tournament? <laughs> I'll say Star Bluster out just because it won me that final game. And then, uh, <laughs> I mean, Gigantorex is just so... It's Gigantorex, Burning Force, and Star Bluster easily. Just cards that you know, the other decks just don't have that are just so much more powerful than most of the cards in their deck. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out with Battle Spirit Saga or just competitive card games in general? Yeah, if you're just starting out, I mean, the best thing is just to find some people that you like to hang out with and just play a lot. I mean, that's the, the most valuable thing you can do is get experience just playing. And then from Battle Spirit Saga, I mean, this game is a lot different than any other game I've played before with the way the resource system works. So <clears throat> you could always go wide, which you see in like the white deck in the final does. It just wants to go wide and overwhelm you with swinging past your blockers. Um, what I've found out is, it, you know, it all depends on how you like to play the game, but when you go wide, you have to spread your cords out on multiple spirits. You can't cast a lot of spells once you do that because they're all stuck making your spirits stay alive. So I think that's one of the challenges when you first start picking up the game is you just want to kind of keep tossing cards out on the field where sometimes the better play is just to make your, your spirits on the field bigger by leveling them up. And so th I think that's the most... I don't know. It's just a hard concept for some newer players to understand is 
the better play is to make my like bearded eagle a seven thousand this turn so next turn i can cast these spells versus well let me just put out these creatures in play or sorry spirits in play so i can block it's it's very unintuitive yeah you uh being a very disciplined player uh makes you not want to go wide in a lot of scenarios so yeah, you'll, you'll, you have to feel that out, right? I'm, I'm sure you've played, it's kind of like, it's not just toss everything down. You're looking for that opportune moment, moment to strike. Exactly. And that, that takes time, and that's where you practice with your friends really, really helps. Yes, sir. Um, are there any changes or improvements you'd like to see in the future of Battle Spirit Saga? Uh, for, like, the events or for the game itself? Um, events or the game itself, either or. Uh, yeah, for events, uh, this event, it was like night and day compared to the Las Vegas event. I had a lot of complaints about how, like, the Las Vegas event was ran. And this event was, you know, miles better. I, it was, the Las Vegas event was so, you know, and you want, you want to give them some flexibility, but it's, I've been playing, like I said, I've been playing card games for 27 years, and it felt like, back when I was in the 90s when we we're still trying to figure out how tournaments should be ran where it's you know there's lots of experience they could have drawn from to run that Las Vegas event mm -hmm. and they just and they just chose not to where this event they fixed a lot of the problems so some of the the problems I had with the first event was it felt like a lot of uh, the judges were unprepared and there were so many rulings that were just wrong and a lot of appeals had to happen. And I, I feel like some of the top 16 or top 32 matches were, you know, there were some rulings that were wrong, which impacted the results. Um, the fact that the tournament ended one round early at the launch event in Las Vegas because of what they call unintentional draws, that's kind of a feel bad for some people that were really close to making the top cut. And they just got for lack of a better word, like screwed out of a round to really make that final push. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just like, <clears throat> just, you know, I'm, I'm biased here. And I'm going to say that before I, I say this, but my friend's playing in top 16 and I feel like he got stalled out a little bit, like his opponent was slow playing. Uh, okay. And there's judge watching and it's like, you know, I know people get nervous and they take a little bit longer when it's in a higher pressure situation like that but the judge watching is not forcing the opponent to make a play and you know when we sat down for the players meeting to begin with they kind of talked about the guidelines in the tournament rule where it's like hey you get 15 seconds to make an action it's a loose guideline but well, we're, we're going to be enforcing it and that just wasn't the case in the top 16. and the problem i, I felt was the head judge wasn't walking around and seeing all the matches at one time um, it was kind of like each of the other judges were in charge of dictating that slow play. So they, they changed that here though. That's, that's where I'm saying it's just, it's like night and day. That's one of my complaints and they fixed that here. Um, my only other like gripe is, I don't know, man, you've been to a turn before it can take nine or 10 hours. So like typically you bring some snacks cause it's not really easy to get food when you're playing a tournament that long. Yeah. Yeah. And these events, they don't let you bring any outside like snacks at all. Oh, absolutely not. And, no. Yeah, and it's it's kind of like I'm not. I don't want to feel forced to buy food from a vendor there. And on top of it, like I don't know, I, I like to be particular in some, some some of the things I eat. So that's just like one of the the gripes I have is just like let us bring uh, some snacks in, but still offer the vendor so in case somebody wants food, they can get it. But yeah, we're kind of here for a card event, not really to have a buffet. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm sure that will come. It'll get fixed. And I mean, you're not the only person I've heard with the uh, uh, Las Vegas opinion. A lot of people had a problem with it. So, I mean, they they. Yeah, the... <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. My bad. They really need to uh, look at that and really review that. Yeah, and I'll say this: like I, we spent some time talking to D, who's in charge of play TCG, or at least the event of Palm Springs. And she was very open to hearing feedback. And she, you know, she sat there and listened to one of my friends for about 30 minutes back and forth with 
like here, you know, it's just, we have, like I said, I have 27 years of playing cards. Like we have a lot of experience that we can draw from and say, here's the things that we've seen work. And here's the things that don't work. So my friend just sat and told her, like, here's the things I hated and here's the things I liked. And she gave her opinion of what they can do differently. It, it just felt like somebody was really listening to us. And then from the judge perspective, you know, I talked to the head judge for a while. It's the same way. He's just like, hey, look, here's the here's the issue is, you know, we didn't even have physical cards in our hands, so it's hard to train, to train the judges for the launch event. And that's changed now. Like, our judges should be getting better and better each event because now we have the physical cards, we can practice, we can do all these things. So it's all going in the right direction. And that's, that's great to hear because uh, this is a really good card game that I want to see succeed. So, yeah, me too. So, um, what do you think the key to success in Battle Spirit Saga is, and how do you maintain focus during a long tournament? Yeah, so it, I think it really comes down to practice. This game's more complicated than most games I've played before. It, it, the fact that you can level up your spirits on your turn and then you have plays that you can make during your opponent's attacks with the resources you used on your spirits, it, you're never essentially out of options in a way where it's, it's it makes it difficult. Like you're, you're playing two different turns in my opinion here. You're, you're figuring out how to be offensive on your turn and def defensive on their turn. Um, and when it comes to like tournaments, I think that just comes with time. It's, it's, I think it's uh, eye opening for some people how long these tournaments can be mm -hmm. and how, how hard it is to stay focused throughout the day. Um, like, I don't know. It, it just comes with experience. I, I, don't, I don't know a different way to tell you, Hey, this is what, this is a way you can, you know, play eight rounds in a row without feeling fatigued at the end of the day. You yeah. kind of just build it up over time. It definitely does wear on the uh, your cognitive ability. All right, Tim. So is there anyone you wanted to give a quick shout out to? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my teammates, uh, Tim Patel, Robert Sarowski, John Hall, and Brad Watson. I think I mentioned it. Like, we've just been playing cards so long together. And uh, without them, I mean, there's no way I could be successful at a tournament like this. Just bashing my head into a wall as uh, they outplay me just really helped. And then I just want to give a shout out to uh, Play TCG and the judges for really picking up the game. Like from where La the Las Vegas launch event was compared to this this weekend, it's just so much better. And then. Uh, I'll give you a shout out just for creating content so people can see the game, man. That's awesome. Well, Tim, I really appreciate your time, man. Uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Have a good one. Yep. Bye. Man, what a guy. What a chill guy. Um, he, he's, he, he, he's the player, man. He's, he's obviously, he's got the experience. He knows what he's talking about. He's, I mean, he's one of the earliest magic players. He's he, he's done this multiple times. So 